All right, so part two is how do you do the math? It's tricky because you got that really big number in there, and there'll be some really big numbers coming up. So we already talked about that the force between people would be pretty small. How small? Well, let's find out. So center to the center between the people, they're 80 centimeters apart from the middle of one twin to the middle of the other twin, not from shoulder to shoulder, from middle to middle. Okay, well, here we go, guys. All right. So you got to know your G thing, 6.67. It's on your equation sheet, times 10 negative 11 newton meter squared per kilogram squared. So we're going to use that equation, this big long thing here. So now you just you just ram the numbers in there. 6.67 EE on your calculator. It's the second function for a lot of your calculators. Um, negative 11 times 50. That's the mass of 110 times 50 kilograms. Remember, you got to be in kilograms. Uh, divided by the distance, 0.8 squared is, try it on your calculator first because people screw this up all the time. Please try this. We'll make sure you know how to put the numbers in. It sounds crazy. People screw this stuff up all the time. That's a pretty small amount. Small enough that you need some special equipment that I don't have here up at school to measure because that's such a small force you don't even notice it. Okay, um, So it's 0.26 of a millionth of a newton you don't even notice so there is an attraction there but you're also attraction to, attracted to the wall the floor and everything else because every mass attracts anything else so that's there you just don't notice it it's such a small amount hey, let's do some more math how much does a 75 kilogram person weigh on earth you be the famug thing right the weight or force of gravity is the mass times your 9.8. It's 735 to two sig figs. They're getting a little crazy with their nutty with their sig figs there. That should be a 740, right? Now let's do the calculation of how does their weight compare to the force of attraction between their body and the earth. Here we go, guys. There's the big G. Okay. Now here's the thing, this is why you got to practice on your calculator a big friggin' number, and it's tricky. 6.67, second function EE, negative 11, times 5.98, second function EE, 24, times 75, divided by 6.37, EE, 6 squared, equals, bam! They're nuts on the sig figs here, I don't know what they're thinking. It's 740. So why is this 740, the force of gravity between the two, and why does the person weigh 740? It's the same thing. There's no difference. The weight of a person is the force of gravity. We didn't do the big long equation because we don't have to. We all live on Earth. At the surface of the Earth, this is what our gravitational field is like, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. That causes things in free fall to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared, which is actually the same unit as a newton per kilogram. So it turns out this 9.8 is a huge portion of this equation without one of these masses. We're going to get there in a second. So as long as you stay on the earth, you don't really have to do this to find forces between the earth and something. This is the easiest way to do it. This is the easiest way to find the force of attraction between a mass on Earth and the Earth because we've already done all this other stuff, all these other measurements. However, if you're getting off the Earth or going to a different distance from the Earth, which is, this is 4,000 miles, guys. The radius of the Earth, that's 4,000 miles. That's 6 million meters or 6,370 kilometers is 4,000 miles. So we don't really venture closer or further than 4,000 miles to the earth, even if you go climbing in the Himalayas. So Mount Everest is what, six miles high, a little less than six miles high? So 4,000 plus six miles is nothing, significant. So the point is, you don't really use this formula to find your weight, you can, but if you already know the 9.8 thing, it's a much faster and easier way of doing things. The point is, you may not always be at the surface of the earth, um, or you may be finding the forces between the Earth and another body um, is really where we use this formula a lot. Okay, so here we go, guys. We've got a baseball. Someone threw a baseball or, or it's got a baseball out there or Iron Mike. No. Iron Mike is a baseball. That's a massive baseball. Anyway, it weighs 980 newtons. What's the radius of the Earth? Well, this is just practicing math. Okay. 
Um, so if you want to find the mass of the Earth first, well, if you already know it weighs 900 and the mass is 100, you divide the two, right? So you first you divide the two. I guess I'm not showing the mass here. So 980 divided by 100, so it's 9.8. Uh, uh, well, the, I'm sorry, the field is 9.8, um, but if you wanted to solve for the Earth's mass, I guess I got to go clear down here to do all this stuff. I thought they're going to show us how to do that. I was wrong. Okay, so if we're doing, the, oops, I didn't hit the right button. All right, guys, so here we go. Let's do red. So if we're doing the force equals the big G, mass, mass, R squared, what they're solving for is one of the masses there. So they know the force of gravity is 980. I guess Iron Mike stepped on a scale. We know the G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. That's the G thing. Um, the mass of the Earth, um, we don't know the mass of the Earth, but that was what they were talking about when they when they watched the Cavendish video. If you know the G thing and you can measure the force on something, you could actually solve for the mass of the Earth. And we all know Iron Mike is 100 kilograms, and then the distance is still the center. They know that they've known the distance for a long time, guys, for thousands of years. They've known the curvature of the Earth and therefore the distance to the center of that sphere. So that's a math thing that they've known for a long time. That whole thing at Christopher Columbus sailing uh, off the edge of the, uh, uh, the, the edge of the Earth because it's flat, it's not true. They knew it was round. That's why they're going backwards trying to get to India to get some of those spices. That's why they're going backwards because they knew it was round. Everybody did. Don't forget to square this bottom number. You solve for the mass. Okay. So it's 980 divided by 6.67e, negative 11, divided by the 100, but times 6.38 times 10 to the 6 squared, and that solves for the mass of the Earth, which is about 6 to the 24th kilograms. It seems like a big mass, way bigger than me. All righty. So they're changing the F, the force of gravity, into W for weight, because the force of gravity is weight, or the pull. On things guys this stuff here this does this um, gravity's pulling on this the pull of gravity in my head that's force of gravity which is weight it has mass but mass and pull of gravity are different things mass and weight are not the same thing weight is a field force mass is a property of inertia okay a a resistance to a change in motion so here's the story big G times mass times mass divided by R well, guys, since we live on the Earth, this mass isn't really changing, at least not that much. We're still 4,000 miles to the center, which is 6,370 kilometers, and the G doesn't change. So as long as you live on the Earth, we can just calculate what this number is, the mass of the Earth times the G divided by the radius, and that's 9.8, it turns out. That's this little G thing. This is the gravitational field of the Earth or the rate something's going to free fall if, if you drop the thing and there's no air resistance. And then this is the mass in that field. This is me. This is you. This is a pineapple. Okay, if you're finding the force of gravity on that from the Earth on that pineapple. So this is your F equals mg, or your Fermug. But that's how we get the G. This is the gravitational field right there. Or the rate at which something will free fall if you drop the thing. Or the centripetal acceleration of this thing if it's changing motion all the time, but at that distance. We'll get there eventually, but not today. Alrighty. So this is a gravitational field, this force per mass. It's easy to measure. You just take a mass, you put it on a scale, like a spring scale or even a bathroom scale, and you take that force per the mass of the object. That's the G thing. You could even do your weight. Problem in America, when you measure your weight, it's going to be not in Newtons because you technically, Newtons would be your weight, kilograms is your mass. But it's that, your force of gravity per your mass, that is what the gravitational field is. So if you didn't want to measure it, you could calculate it by knowing the mass of the planet you're on and how close you are to the center. And of course, the G is a constant. So A and G are really the same thing. G is just more specific. It's not any acceleration like what this is. It's acceleration due to gravity or gravitational field strength. You can measure this with your spring scale. 
I know we don't have any spring scale, so let me tell you real briefly what a spring scale is with my magic pen. Since we're remote people, we haven't really done any of these. Oh my goodness. I've got to remotely figure out how to work this stinking pen. Red. I'm using red because it's making me angry. So, a spring scale, it's got a little spring in it. Okay? And on this spring, oops, what's going on here? I'm still, okay. There's a little hook at the bottom. And so if I have a mass, I'd put that hook right on the mass. And the bigger the mass, the bigger the pull of gravity on it, the further it pulls down. And so there's a little rating on here from like um, zero force to maybe 10 newtons. So this might be 5 newtons. So if I had a 0.5 kilogram mass, which is 500 grams, and I put that on my spring scale, this little thing right here, it would be zero normally before I put the weight on, but it serves to the earth, it's gonna pull down to the five, because that's how hard gravity pulls on a half a kilogram, because five newtons per 0.5 kilograms is 10, whoops, I forgot my one, 10 newtons per kilogram, which is meters per second squared. Okay, so that's an experiment that's pretty easy to do. You could change your amount of mass, you could change it to a 0.4. Well, if I change it to a 0.4, it's less of a force of gravity. It's going to read 4 newtons on there because the spring will stretch less. So that's a pretty easy thing to use to measure your gravitational field. Just put a known mass on your spring scale on any planet you're on, and just take your force per mass, and that's what the gravitational field is, which is an easier way than calculating that if you didn't know the mass. But if you knew the mass, you don't have to go to that planet, which is a pretty expensive thing to do. Well, there you go, guys. All righty. So um, the easy way to measure weight is your mass times the g if you know the g, OK? So the weight of, of an object is the gravitational force. There's no difference. And it always acts towards the center of the planet. One time, we entertained ideas of anti-gravity, and we still do. But we don't know how that anti-gravity would work, if it even does work, or what it is. Okay? More on that another time. All right, let's do some examples here. Um, so astronaut Bob stands on top of the highest mountain, planet R, which has a radius of R. Um, Ted whizzes in a circular orbit of the same radius. Astronaut Carol whizzes in a circular orbit of three times the radius. Astronaut Alice is simply falling straight downward and at a radius of R, but it hasn't hit the ground yet. Which of these astronauts experience weightlessness? It turns out all of, whoops, not all of them, because Bob is on a mountain. Gravity pulls down, the mountain pushes back. Bob is not in a free fall. Ted, Carol, and Alice, letter C, they're all um, in a weightless sensation feeling because they're all falling. Bob is not falling. Okay, so there's Bob. There's Ted. Oops. There's Carol way the heck out there. So it turns out they're, they're, um, Ted and Carol are falling. Um, Bob is not. Are we missing Alice? Well, there's Alice. She's falling but closer. She's having a bad hair day. All right. So same story. Astronaut Alice. Okay. They all weigh 180 pounds. The gravitational force acting on Ted is, well, it's the weight, guys. It's 180 pounds. Okay, they all have Ashton are 180 pounds. They all have a force of 180 pounds of gravity. Whoops, not Carol, not Carol. She's three times further away. That's a ninth, right? So the gravitational force acting on Alice is well, it's the same amount. It's W. It's 180 pounds at that distance. Okay, the gravitational force acting on Carol, that's the ninth because three times further away, it's one ninth the pull. Still in a free fall. But the gravitational field is one ninth out there, therefore there's one ninth the force out there. Uh, has a greater ex undergoing acceleration of 9.8, it'd be the Alice and the Tedrick. Okay? Just the Alice and the Tedrick have the 9.8, because remember, Carol is one ninth of that 9.8. Alrighty, guys, we're going to stop right there because this talks about Brahe and some other people that aren't real exciting. Another day on this, well, it is exciting. Another video on this one. Alright, take care.